good morning good afternoon good evening folks the most important tool to reach 99th percentile and you are ignorant of it and you are ignoring it so what is this uh quite simply mocks nothing else and so uh, keep hearing these uh, these nuggets about different elements of preparation the single most important part quite quite incredibly important the pivotal thing is mocks and so to the exclusion of everything else you can do only mocks and still be kind of ready and you do everything else and you don't do mocks you're not ready so it's uh, one of those beautiful things is a necessary and sufficient conditions and you get to every now and then you hear this annoying people who say look i heard about cat about um, about two months before the exam i applied for it just like that i prepared for three weeks and i got 99.7 Uh, even those annoying people have taken three four mocks and so the 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 getting geared for the exam thing is the most pivotal thing and so and you cannot you cannot afford to wake up to that idea with four weeks to go unless you're incredibly gifted in which case have fun your world is on a platter for you enjoy yourself right uh, for most of us you need to have a mechanism to grind through and and kind of build momentum over a period of time the most important thing from now till the exam is going to be your mock schedule don't worry about completing syllabus don't worry about volatile scores don't worry about percentile cutoffs don't worry about previous year acads don't worry about uh, one section cutoff being missed out any of that worry about having a rigorously powerful mock schedule don't say don't worry about any of that worry about that way less than you would worry about mocks if there is one thing that you need to have completely a wonderful handle on is a beautiful plan for taking tons of mocks and sticking to that plan so keep that in mind so be very 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 mindful make that the center piece of your preparation till about she started preparing long ago till about end of may first week of june doing quant and geometry and para jumble and venn diagram puzzles are all fine that we do piecemeal put the jigsaw together get the overall picture all good here on in the center piece of your preparation has to be mocks very clearly and increasingly so you're going to come to going to utterly dominate your preparation in the last two months but in the run up to the last two months it still has to be front and center bang in the middle keep that in mind by a good mock series to i am of course uh, check that check out that content and then buy that and then stick to a good schedule cyfm like fomo or jomo I- and so uh, what is cyfm what does it stand for it says crack your first mock the first mock is generally typically uh, a huge hurdle and mentally psychologically uh, it, it, we tend to big it up and the, the first step unwittingly we big it up and so we at 2 am are going to help you put together different elements of 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 cracking your first mock what do i mean by cracking your first mock taking your first mock you take it you have cracked it And so, but remember, no matter what we do and how much we help or how much you plan, how much you have different pieces of elements of this together, it is like ripping off a bandaid. And so, just jump in and do your first mock. That, in and of itself, is great value than anything else that you may do in order to get yourself geared up. And so, the score, the first mock doesn't matter. Your performance, stamina, percentile, none of it matters. Taking it matters. And so, we we put in together a toolkit. and how to help with the mock series it not just crack, crack your first mock first few mocks and so uh, one of our one of our uh, competitors or peers and hitesh from hr mentors and so he said it he kept taking mock he kept taking mock and he didn't have a hang of it and so and then in his 14th mock if i'm not mistaken it fell in place in his 14th mock is it's almost like the, like the penny dropped he knew what this was about he got it and from there on he practically nailed every mock and nailed cat as well so 14 is a pretty large number it's unusual maybe he's padding it but uh, 14 it took that long to get the hang of it so 
crack your first few mocks till you get the hang of it. You need to take different inputs to get what this is about. And then you can, you can jump in. We at Twime are having a, releasing a series of videos to kind of handhold you through the journey of the first few mocks. Only how to stay focused for two hours during a mock test. And so, um, tough when your mind wanders. First step is to accept and acknowledge that very often our mind wanders. It's difficult to keep it focused on one thing for 120 minutes. Very much possible. You will get closer and closer to it. You will get better and better at it. You will need to improve. But it is all right if it is not in place on day one. First of all, you need to accept that. Uh, we are not all naturally born with the ability to spend 120 minutes doing just one thing from the first time we do it. So, okay, that's why the mock cycle is there. Okay? What do we do if our mind wanders? If it starts, some, sometimes uh, there are two tracks to our brain. One part is for solving the mock, other is evaluating how am I doing? Where do I stand? What are my chances? All of that. You have to shut off that, that part of your brain. You have to say, silence your Bruno. And you have to shut off that part of your brain where you say, look, I'm not going to let that dominate my thoughts and bring back, come back to the question on question battle. The important thing is to have a bag of tricks. If your mind wanders, you bring it back and then you start all over again. If you've been reading a passage, that's when it wanders the most. You might have to read the last three lines all over again. You have to uh, conceptually have to rediscover the choice of getting consumed in the content. And the more comfortable you are with it, that gets better. The more passive reading you do, the better it gets. Right? Every time you wander, you come back. That's very important. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel worried about so much time I've lost. My mind is wandering so much. I am in trouble. Uh, don't do all that. You bring it back, you restart. It is okay to have your mind take a walk. It is okay. If you are too harsh on yourself, you can't work. You say, TK, it went off, it took a walk. Now I'm back. I'll focus. That is enough. Uh, body hacks help. For me, if I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm disturbed, I stretch my hand, take a deep breath, start over again. When I finish a section and I go to another section, I, I rewire my brain to say all over again, here we go. And so that those things help. Uh, leaving a tricky question and saying that this won't matter. Telling yourself consciously this won't matter. And then rebooting and starting all over again, that helps. The entire mock cycle is for that. Don't be too harsh if your mind takes a walk. Bring it back and restart. Take deep breaths to refocus. Do something physical to come back, back on, back on track. Reboot for each section. Is there a bag of tricks? You'll find your own bag of tricks, set of tricks to come back and, and, and refocus. It's okay that your mind wanders. It's not, not that easy doing 120 minutes at a stretch. And so, therefore, don't be too harsh on yourself. Okay. One bad section, should the whole mock go down with it?